you bless the ones that are here, oh God. Bless the ones that are watching virtually, oh God. Meet them at the point of their need, oh God, but only you know what they stand in the need of on today, God. Lord, we ask that you allow the word to come forth with clarity and understanding, oh God. Lord, I ask that you open up our ears even the more, oh God, to hear from you on today, God. God, we give you glory in this place. God, we thank you for using the man of God on today. God, we thank you for your sweet spirit in this place. God, all these we ask in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Is anybody glad this morning that you are on top of the ground and the ground is not on top of you? Come on, somebody be glad that you have your life this morning. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody didn't open their eyes this morning, but God gave you another chance. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, come on and magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on and magnify the Lord. Come on and magnify the Lord. Because we serve a mighty God. We serve a magnificent God. We serve a holy God. We serve a faithful God. There's nobody like him in all the earth. You can search everywhere. You can search high and low, but there's nobody like our God. God, we give you a great praise this morning. We give you a great praise this morning to match your excellent greatness. God, we love you. God, we want to be with the angels that bow before you, oh God. We want to worship you with them, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we give you glory, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, we just want to worship him this morning. Angels, they bow before you. Heaven and earth adore you. The earth is filled with your glory. is filled with your glory. Come on, y'all, help me say, say, angels. Angels, they bow before you. That's it, come on, say, heaven and earth. Heaven and earth the earth is filled with your glory.
Come on and worship the mighty God. can do anything but fail. Mighty is our God. Say mighty. Mighty is our God. Mighty is our God. Mighty is our God. Mighty is our God. Mighty is our God.
to say it again. How you lifted up your name above all names. You are worthy. Yeah. I will try to understand what you're saying. That means he's bigger than any problem. Your name, your name is above all names. You are worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. All we say, our praise. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. Hallelujah. Come on, he's a good God. Yes, he is. So we're having the witnesses. Yes, he is. He's a great God. Last time, strings, upper register strings. hands. Thank you, praise team. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up those hands. Oh, bless them. Come on, bless them. Bless them. Come on, 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 bless them. Those of you all that are tuned in with us, come on, bless them. Right there in your home, come on, bless them. Bless them. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy, worthy. Worthy, worthy. Worthy, worthy. Bless the Lord. We are just so excited to be back to the house of worship one more time. <laughs> I salute each of you in the matchless name of Jesus. Say, I am the way, the truth. And we're just so glad for each of you that are tuned in and those that are here and in person in worship. For the Lord is doing some great things right here in the midst, uh, in the body of Christ as a whole. And I'm just excited to be a part of what God is doing in this season. Let me say that again. You should be excited to be a part of what the Lord is doing in this season. I dare you right there where, where you are. I dare you to just clap your hands and just just right just 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 just, 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 just clap your hands because this is a great time 
this is a great time to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. The old church say, with a mighty burning fire, with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. <laughs> Woo, I might, I might. Some of y'all don't know nothing about that. I say, I'm, he said, the old folks used to say, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, the mighty burning fire, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Glory, 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 glory. I, I, I wish somebody said it again. I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Woo! With the mighty burning fire. Woo! With the evidence. See, you got to have some evidence. There's got to be something to let you know that it's there. It's got to be something to let you know. With the evidence Woo! of speaking in tongues. day, it's going to take the Holy Ghost. Woo. It come out of my rope. It's going to take the Holy Ghost. Huh. That's the power right there. That's your power, the Holy Ghost. Huh. Come out of my rope. The Holy I met somebody to shout, the Holy Ghost. about the Holy Ghost. They talk about houses and cars and money. But I want to talk about the Holy Ghost. See, I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, I need a refilling of the Holy Ghost. And he said, that's what you want? I said, yeah. He said, well, here it is. Refilling of the Holy Ghost. Of the Holy Ghost. I wish somebody had shout, refill me, God, refill me. Refill me, refill me, refill me. Ew. See, sometimes you need to ask God, God, refill me. I need a refilling of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes we just need a refilling of the Holy Ghost. We need a refilling of the Holy Ghost. Come on, come on, come on. Hey! Okay. 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 See, sometimes. It ain't nothing like a good old consecration where the Lord said, I take you away and put you on the Isle of Patmos where it can be nobody but you and me, nobody but you and me. Hallelujah. Sometimes God want to take you out. He want to take you out so he can pour into you. Sometimes ain't nothing wrong with a good old consecration. 
But when you come back, when you come back, woo! Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm trying to move on, Brendan. But when I think, woo! Of the goodness of Jesus in all. Okay, all right, we got him. Okay, we, we, we got to move on. Oh, let me tell you, there's a price. Oh, God. There's a price. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it, Brandon. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Thomas D. Sometimes you just need a good Brittany. You just need a good refilling of the Holy Ghost. Oh. Okay. Okay, come on, don't do me. Okay, we gotta. Oh God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see your mother angel. I see you online. Yeah, ain't nothing like a good refilling of the Holy Ghost. I see your mother angel. Uh huh. Woo, glory, 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 glory. Glory. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, I see your mother. Uh huh. Uh -huh. See, the Lord took me in Revelation. He said, I want to show you something, but He told me, Here are the key words Come up hither. I said, What? He said, Come up hither. I said, what are you saying, God? He said, that what you see is not on that level. You got to come up. <laughs> they can say they didn't hear me. Let me say this to the house. That what you seek, I'm going to tell you like the Lord told me, it's not on that level. You got to come up hither. I, I wish somebody shout, come up hither. Mother Mia, so good to see you this morning. Glory. All right. We're so, we thank God, we acknowledge, thank God for Lady Bell. <laughs> Glory. There is a word <laughs> hmm. from the Lord. And the Lord has spoken again. Uh -huh. Thank God for the music ministry. Praise God. Praise team. 
worship, Lady Bay did an excellent job today. Praise team, you all did an excellent job. Praise dance, horn section, the entire music ministry, y'all did an excellent job today. Thank God for you. Okay, let's work a little bit. All right, we're going to call your attention to the gospel according to Matthew. Man, I'm losing so much weight, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I went from 280 to about 253 now. <laughs> So everything is just loose. <laughs> the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Watch this, Ray. So good to see you this morning to have you with us, bro. So glad to have you. Listen at this. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? Hmm. And when they got into the boat, Sister Natalie, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of of God. This morning, we're going to talk about dilemmas. Dilemmas. Huh? What is a dilemma? Let me go right into it for time's sake. What, 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 what is a dilemma? Watch this. A dilemma is a situation that requires a choice between options that are or seem equally unfavorable or unsatisfactory. Let me say that again because I need for y'all to catch this. A dilemma is a situation that requires a choice between options that are or seem equally unfavorable or unsatisfactory. You ever heard, you ever been in a situation where it seemed like no matter which choice you chose, it seemed like both of them was bad or going, who am I talking to here? If I do this, then that's going to happen. If I do that, then this is going to happen. And you're like, man, well, what do I do? We used to say it like this, I'm going to choose the lesser of two evils, right? But, but, but both of them have a 
part that they're going to play. Both of them have something uh, intrinsic that is going to affect. So, you know, it's like, they were, what, what do I do? The, 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 I choose the letter. You like, well, you know, we were talking about, <laughs> I remember talking about during the election with Hillary Clinton and uh, Mr. Trump. That whole situation. And I remember the people were saying, since the people were saying, you know, well, election, I want to choose the, the, what's the lesser of the two evils? We were in a dilemma. Anybody else besides me ever been in a dilemma? Well, if, I, if I choose this, Markella, here's this. If I, if I choose that, here's that. And, 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 it, and it places us in dilemmas. So it wasn't in here uh, uh, in this boat with Peter and, and the disciples. They were in this boat and, and they were in a dilemma. But the Lord said something to me very interesting in my time of meditation because, you know, I love to meditate. I like to, like to labor for him to hear what he has to say. He said something very interesting to me. He said, now, 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 and I'm using, he said, now I'm going to use the analogy of the boat and the Peter and the disciples in the boat. He said, here are the things. Here's the analogy. This is what you're going to do in this dilemma. Either you stay in the boat and do nothing or do something besides staying in the boat. Oh, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. He said, he said, now either you can stay in the boat and do nothing or you can do something besides staying in the boat. Okay, all right, okay. Uh, so, see, see, many of you are afraid because, watch this, it appears to be an uh, uh, a adverse condition either way. But the Lord said this, either you stay in the boat or do nothing or do something besides stay in the boat. Why? Because look at this thing. Nobody had ever walked on water before. Nobody had ever walked on water before. And watch this. So watch this. You ever been in a situation where, you know, I could use the other word, but I use this word, I'm doomed if I do. Oh, I'm doomed if I don't. I'm doomed if I do. But so not, not, no matter which way you turn. So here the, Peter was, you know, I, I, if he stayed in the boat, he would never walk on the water. Then if it got out of the boat, the people in the boat were going to trip. Talking about, who are you talking about you going to walk on water? Not you, Peter. Of all people, not you. Peter, you. No, Peter, not them. Not, you ain't finna walk on no water, Peter. That, that's Jesus. You ain't going to walk on no water, Peter. Because, see, Peter, you got to remember. See, 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 uh, uh, Peter, I know you. Peter, you're a cusser. You got a bad attitude. You got a bad temper. Anybody ever in here ever looked at you and disqualified yourself because you looked at you? <laughs> Every, anybody else besides me you ever looked at you disqualified yourself because you looked at you watch this I come to tell you God saw you before you and knew you before you and knew that you were going to be you but he still chose you oh y'all miss let me say it again God knew you before you <laughs> even before you knew you he chose you and still he's using you. Somebody ought to be, ought to get excited right there because even though we look at ourselves and see us, we know ourselves, we know what, our, what we think, we know what our heart is, we know we don't do everything right. And God still say, you know what, I'm going to use you, but here's the dilemma. Are you going to continue to be stuck in you and do nothing or are you going to do something in spite of you? I need some people right now that's going to be around me and say, you know what? You know what? I ain't going to let nothing stop me. I'm, I'm determined right now. I, I, I know the dilemma. I know I'm in a dilemma. I know what the dilemma is, but I'm determined that I'm going to go. I'm determined we're going to do what the Lord said. Is there anybody in here you made up in your mind? I don't care what shall separate me from the love of God. Shall trials, shall tribulations, shall ups and downs, nothing shall separate. Because I come to tell you, you got an assignment. Tell your neighbor you got an assignment to do. Now, 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 let's look at this so just for a second. Let's, let's look at some revelatory nuggets. Let's, Mama, let's look at some revelatory nuggets let, some, about these dilemmas, about dilemmas, uh, about dilemmas. Let's look at this. Some rhema nuggets about dilemmas. Uh, nugget number one, dilemmas. Watch this, watch this. I need for y'all to catch this. Dilemmas causes what you didn't know was in you to manifest. 
<laughs> oh, come y'all, y'all, y'all missed that. Let me say that again. Del if it wasn't for the dilemma, you and you didn't know what was on the inside of you. Dilemmas caused what you didn't know that was in you to manifest. In other words, when you were put in that dilemma, it made you fast. It made you pray. It made it called for that other anointing to come up. So you gotta understand anointings, watch this. Anointings are drawn um uh, 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 to, to situations. So when a situation arises in your life, that which is in you has to come up because the situations, watch this. The situation don't calls for you. The situation calls for your anointing. So the Lord said, in order for uh, your anointing to come forth, I have to allow situation to birth it. So dilemmas, many of us, many of us, many of us, the dilemmas cause what we didn't know that was in us to manifest. Some of y'all didn't know you had that kind of patience. Anybody in me, you ever say, you know what, I ain't gonna, you know, I, you watch somebody else go through what you're going through, and back then when you say, you say, mm, ain't no way I go through that, uh-uh, they try that with me, uh-uh, they ain't going no time for that, uh-uh, you crazy, I ain't going through all that. I went to, and the next thing, you know, the Lord said, that's why you got to be careful what you say you won't do, because the very thing that you say you won't do, God will turn around and let you to go through it. So that's why, you know, and the next thing you know, you are going through what you didn't think that, I know I couldn't handle that, you know, I know that when, because I know me, I'm a cusser, I'm a cutter. I know it'll be all in the Lord. I said, mm -mm, I'm going to show you really what's in you. Has God revealed something in you that you didn't even know was there in this season? Mm, he just dropped this on me. That which was in you that you didn't know that was in you that has arisen is needed for the next. <laughs> See, he had to manifest that gift in you. He had to manifest that anointing in you because as we're stepping into the next, that anointing is, is necessary. It, it wasn't necessary back then, but it's, I wish somebody would shout, it's necessary. It's necessary right now because that's what you need, watch this, to deliver somebody else, to walk with somebody else through that deliverance. In order for you, for, watch this, in order to walk with someone else through that deliverance, you got to walk through it first. Everybody say dilemmas, 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 dilemmas. Oh God, nugget number two about dilemmas. It shows that God trusts you with what he couldn't trust no one else with. <laughs> Y'all missed that. See, see, the enemy has the most interesting way of causing our vision or our visage to look at situations all wrong. And the Lord said, a lot of times what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to prove something to somebody else. I'm trying to prove something to, to somebody else that you don't even know that's observing you, Ray, that you don't even know. So what I'll do, I, what I'll do, I trust you so much that I can let you go through that what I can trust somebody else with. Let me tell you something. God I, trust, I wish somebody to shout, God must really trust me. Uh, somebody need to shout that God must really trust me because, see, you just see me smiling right now, but you don't know the price. You don't know the behind the scene that's been going on. And the reason why God allowed it, because he wants you to know, I trust you. I couldn't trust nobody else to handle what you've been going through, to handle what you went through. I trust, aren't you glad that God trusted you because the thing that was birthed from what you went through God Almighty. Dilemmas shows that God trusts you with what he can trust no one else with. Now here's the very interesting thing he told me before we exegete this text, before we go into Logos, here's the very interesting thing, Mother Mears, that the Lord told me in this last revelatory nugget about dilemmas. Everybody say dilemmas. Dilemmas. Now watch this. Nugget number three. Here it is. No matter what, God will get the glory. No matter what, God will get the glory. How do I know that? Because he promised. He said, I'll never, Tiffany, put no more upon you than you can bear. I'll never allow you to go through something that you can't, that, that, that you already don't have the victory in. See, see what you got to understand that before you went into it, you already had the victory. But the devil wants you to think that it's so big that you, can, that you don't have the victory. But before you even went into it, you already, I wish somebody shot, I had the victory at the beginning. So here we, here we are here at the time of the text. Very interesting at the time of the text. We have a very interesting situation here and a very interesting situation. 
I think everybody have heard or everybody have read this scripture or heard this story about how Jesus just finished doing a miracle feeding, uh, uh, dealing with the multitude, dealing with the multitude. And it was a whole bunch of people there. And, and Jesus is finished performing a miracle, uh, doing all of this great work. And the disciples were there with him. So Jesus said, you know what, disciples, you all go on to the other side. You, know, you all go on to the other side, go on to the, from, mm, God, somebody need to catch this. Leave this place where you are and then go to the other side. Uh, 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 and I'm going to send the crowd away. I'm going to send the crowd away, and I'm going to send the crowd away while you get in the boat and go to the other side because I'm going to meet you all over there. I'm going to meet you over there. You just get in the boat and go to the other side. But in the midst of them getting to the other side, watch this, a storm comes. Anybody in here besides me, watch this, anybody in here besides me, obeying God attracted storms? <laughs> See, a lot of times the devil makes you think that you're doing something wrong, that you're doing something wrong. But sometimes, sometimes being obedient will attract storms. But here's the difference. Here's the difference. Uh, when you're being obedient to God and you attract storms, you ain't got to worry about being defeated because your obedience is better than sacrifice. And God said, as long as you stay in my perfect will, I have no other choice but to take care of you. I'm going to do it. Uh, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. I don't think I need for you to do is stay in my perfect will. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Just stay in my will. So now they're in the transition. They're in transition. They're going from here to there. But something very interesting that jumped out to me uh, that, that he wanted me to share with you as we're talking about dilemmas, that we're talking about dilemmas, something very interesting that he jumped out at me. Let's look at verse 22, and we'll find uh, point number one in verse 22. Uh, and immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he did dismissed the crowd. Immediately, he made. Did y'all catch that? Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat. Okay, let me catch that. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat. That leads us to point number one. Look at this. This is going to be right here. This is good right here. Your season of avoidance is over. <laughs> it says he made them, right? He made them. He says, yes, I come to tell you all, watch this, your season of, some of y'all avoiding ministry, some of y'all avoiding ministry, and oh God, you're avoiding your anointing, you're avoiding your gifting, you're avoiding ministry, you're trying to do everything, you're trying to run here, run there to keep from doing what, uh, what the Lord has said to do, but the Lord said immediately get into, I wish somebody shout, get into your boat, get into that boat, and immediately he made them, he made them, he made them, what am I saying to you, tune in, the avoidance, it, because see, work Anybody here besides me, if God didn't put his hand on you, you wouldn't do it. You would have kept running. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So he said, immediately, I miss somebody shot right now, not tomorrow, but right now. And immediately he made them. Point number one is this. Your season of avoidance is over. It's over. It's the lemma. Brit, Brit. Let you know. That your season of avoidance is over. I, you, know, you know, some of us, I just want to sit back. Let me just go to church. Let me just go home. I don't want to get caught in that because, you know, a lot of us, I've been in church hurt. I've been hurt. I've been disappointed, blah, 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 blah. So I don't want to do the things of ministry. I don't want to do that. Just let me come and let me go and all that kind of stuff. So let me, say, let me share something with you. I, I, I learned this a long time ago. The Lord allow you to see the good and bad in ministry so you'll know what not to do when your time comes. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, so a lot of times the Lord would allow that adverse to manifest so he can teach not. See, see, we, uh, we look at it wrong. Sometimes I mean, we think that the Lord is trying to teach someone else a lesson when he's actually trying to teach you a lesson because the Lord said, I want you to learn this so when your time comes, you won't make that mistake. I'm talking to somebody here. Uh-huh. So, 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 so he said immediately he made them. And at least, let's watch this to, to point number two. We'll see that verse 23 and 24. Uh, uh, verse 23 and 24, very interesting. We're talking about dilemmas. Look at this, verse 23 and 24. We're talking about dilemma. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Verse 24, watch this. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. Now listen to this. Now listen to this. Uh, Jesus told them to go. 
He made them get in the boat, made them leave. In the midst of that, they got in the boat and left. And, and, and the Bible said that he was, the boat was a long way from them. The boat was a long way from them, and in the midst of the boat being a long way from them, a storm arose, and uh, the waves began to beat the boat, and the wind was against the boat, which leads us to point number two. Here it is. When the winds, when winds come against you, and Jesus is nowhere to be found. Dilemmas will, will put you in a situation where when the winds will come against you and Jesus will know, Jesus, hold on now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm already in the, I'm a, I'm a, we're in the, we're in the serious dilemma here. You may begin the boat. I really didn't want to. But you may begin the boat. I got in the boat. You told us where to go, to the other side. We're doing what you said, dude, going to the other side. And in the midst of that, It'd be different if we went through a storm and you were close by. But the Bible says the boat was a long way from him. Check this out. Look at the story. Look at it. He made you get in the boat, stuff you've been avoiding. You didn't want to do in ministry. You didn't want to be in leadership. You didn't want to preach. You didn't want to prophesy. You didn't want to do it. But you decided to do it. And in the midst of you said, okay, I do it. Now you stepped out. You're doing what he said, dude. Now here come a storm. Two things. The winds, which means, which representation of life, is beating against you. And the second thing they say is that the wind is coming against you. The waves are beating against you, which is life. And the winds are coming against you. That means resistance. Now, I don't know who told you that being in the will of God was going to be easy. Matter of fact, let me show you how the, the, the devil is using his... Delusion, not illusion, delusion. You ever notice he'll let you look at somebody else who don't go to church, who ain't trying, who ain't doing nothing, and here you are trying to be obedient, you're trying to go to church, you're trying to pay your tithe, you try to be in attendance, you try to do all those things, and it seems like they ain't going through nothing, but you catching all the trouble. It's a delusion. And some of them, you know what? They ain't going through all this. So you know what? Maybe I just, uh, Sister Cromati, maybe I'll just chill. Like maybe I'll just back up and, and, and not do, you know, because they ain't going through the stuff that I'm going through. And I'm trying, and they ain't doing nothing. They're they staying in the bed right now. They ain't even tuned in the virtual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When the winds come against you, and Jesus is nowhere to be found, that's what the dilemma does. The dilemma will position you. Now, not only that, let's, let's go in further. I want to get to you. We're talking about dilemmas. Let's look at verse 25 and 26, and we'll see something very interesting in there that I believe is going to bless you real good. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. 26. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is the ghost. It's the ghost. Who, who, who wrote on that wall? It was the ghost. It was the ghost that did. Y'all saw that little girl on Facebook. Well, who, when the mama came to and said, well, who did all of this? A pen, marker, writing all on the wall. Who did it? It was a ghost. It was a ghost. It was a ghost. And Jesus was like, no, it ain't no ghost. It's me. Watch this. You ever been in a situation? I want you to see this. Now, this is interesting. Look at the story. The fourth watch denotes between three to between 2 a.m. and 5 and 6 a.m. in the morning. Look at this. There's a storm. There's wind. There's rain. It's, anybody ever been on the ocean at night? I ain't talking about on shore. I'm talking about in the middle of the ocean. You never been on, you never, you never been on the cruise? Let me tell you something. On the, on the ocean at night, you can't even see your hand in front of you it's just that dark and now when you add the elements to that of the wind and rain that makes it even more crazy even more of a challenge to see now how, here's the here's the thing how did they see something afar off it's one thing to be able to see something close up on you, Elder Sean. But how, first of all, were they able 
to see something afar off in the middle of the sea in a storm with wind blowing. How were they even able to see that? God has the most unique way in your dilemma to allow you to see him in the midst of darkness. If you will see God instead of the elements. See, a lot of times we get so caught up looking at the elements that we fail to see God in the midst of the dilemmas. So that leads us to this, no, it leads us to point number three. Watch this, the point number three, this is good. When storms cause your discernment to be off. When, when storms cause your discernment to be off. Their discernment was off. Their discernment was off. They couldn't discern. If it was Jesus, they said, is it a ghost? When storms cause your discernment to be out, dilemmas, everybody say dilemmas. They were in a serious dilemma. It's something when you're in a serious situation, you can't tell whether that is Jesus or a ghost. <laughs> That's a serious dilemma. When you're in the middle of a storm, and the storm has blurred your spiritual vision so bad that you can't tell whether or not it's Jesus or a ghost. Anybody ever been in a storm like that where you couldn't even discern if it's, Lord, are you, are, where are you, God? Are you in this? Where are you? Because right now I can't see. Is it, a, is it a ghost? Anybody ever question, what is this? When storms cause your discernment, to be off. Now let's look at verse 27 through 29. Let's, it's, it's Jesus in the morning. We're talking about dilemmas because there's a lot, there's a lot in this concerning this Peter walking on the water. There's a lot in this in this dilemma. Let's read verse 27 through 29 and we will see our next points that we're going to get that I want you to see that the Lord has, has uh, illustrated and he wants you to get concerning your dilemmas. But immediately, watch this now, but immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart. It is I. Don't be afraid. Verse 28. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Now, you commanded me to get in this boat. I was trying to avoid it. Now, now here it is again. It's like you commanded me to get in the boat. If this you, command me to get out this boat and walk on the water. Verse 29, here it is. And he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. Now something very interesting in that. Notice this. Catch this now. Let me show you, look at the dilemma. Notice all the disciples, watch this dilemma. All of the disciples were screaming, Jesus, is this you? But notice, they were all screaming, Jesus, is you? But notice when Peter spoke up, none of them said nothing, which leads us to this point. Look at this. This is interesting. When those who should be cheering for you gets quiet, it seemed like they should have been cheering, Raven, for Peter because none of them had the courage to even challenge. What was it? None of them had the courage to even talk to what they were afraid of. Mm, how many of you all are scared to talk to what you're afraid of? They were all acknowledging, oh, it's a you, it's a you. But when Peter said, if it's you, Bid me come, and he got out of the boat. It seems like they would have said, go on, Peter. 
gone with your battle. Uh, we behind you, Peter. We behind you 100%. We got you, Peter. I'm glad, Peter, to see what you're doing. I'm glad that you decided to speak to it because we weren't going to do it. Notice they got quiet. It is something, dilemmas, dilemmas, dilemmas. Very interesting concerning these dilemmas. Uh, dilemmas, watch this. When those who, uh, who should be cheering for you gets quiet. It got quiet, right? They were just screaming. But then, have you ever noticed the moment you decide to get to do something, everybody get quiet? That was a serious dilemma, Deacon say. They were just screaming. If it's you, if it's you, if it's you. But the moment he did something, they all of a sudden got quiet. Some people don't want to see you go to the next level. As long as you in the boat screaming what is it, they good. But the moment you step out of the boat to walk on the water, they get quiet. Are you hearing me? So now here it again, this is good teaching this morning. We're talking about dilemmas. I hope y'all don't like catching this because we're coming to a close with this. Let's look at, let's, let's, let's look at verse 30 and 31. We, we'll see something very interesting in verse 30 and 31. We're talking about dilemmas. Let's read it. Put it up. Let's read it. Let's read it. Read it. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. 31. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, ye a little faith, why did you doubt? Now, I want you to look at this. Uh, uh, before we put that point up, now look at this. Look at the story. Now, here, Peter, Peter, son, is a miracle. He's walking on the water. He's doing something that no one else had ever done besides Jesus, walk on the water. Well, look at this. Look at this point. What happens in your dilemma when the miracle lose focus? Jesus, Peter was the miracle, but he lost focus because he started looking at the wind. He was doing something mighty with God, but he lost focus. The closer he was getting to Jesus, the more the winds begin and the waves. I can no doubt, I can see Peter in the sea, little old Peter, and waves over his head. First of all, it's dark. I'm out here by myself. Those who were in the boat with me, my disciples, they ain't even cheering for me. I'm out here by myself. I'm walking on this water. I'm trying to get to you, Jesus. But it seemed like the more the closer I get to him, the more intense the waves and the winds come to the point where it takes my focus. I'm the miracle. But now, because of mm, the reactions of my obedience, it now, has now taken my focus. That's a bad dilemma. What happens? When the miracles, I wish somebody shout, I'm a miracle. When you as a miracle lose focus, that's a dilemma. Not only that's a dilemma, when the miracle, Willie, that's why I tell you, Willie, I said, I said, no, Willie, you can't get distracted right now because see, you the miracle of appling. You can't get distracted. I know you got a dilemma. I know you got, you need instruments, but that's why I would tell you, I said, no, use your resources. Don't allow the focus on what you don't have to, to make you miss what's in place. You got a budget, use it. How many of us have been guilty of that? We allowed what was occurring to distract us. 
when God was using us as a miracle. We allowed it. Being a miracle to become distracted. Finally, verses 32 and 33. Look at this. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Next verse. And those, now watch this now, check it out. Look at this. And those in the boat worshiped him saying, worship him, worship him, G Peter, Jesus. Watch this. Saying, truly, you are the son of God. Now, I want y'all to catch this before we, just, we put it up there. I want y'all to see this. Look at the, look at the, look at the scenario. When they were in the boat, check it out. They were all crying. They were talking. Is this you? Is this a ghost? Peter got out of the boat. They got quiet. Peter became the miracle. Peter walking on the water. He became distracted. Jesus, I'm sinking. Jesus reaches his hand, catches him, pull him up. They walk back to the boat. Now, mind you, now Peter still, check it out now, Markella. Both of them are walking on water. Peter's still walking on water with Jesus. But here's the dilemma. When they got to the boat, they still didn't acknowledge Peter. They say, truly, you are the son of man, but what about me? Final point. Look at the dilemma. Unrecognized accomplishments. When people don't see what you did. See the dilemma? Notice, Sonia. They acknowledge you, truly you are the son of God. But I'm the miracle. We, it ain't just Jesus walking on the water. It's both of us. When you're unrecognized, miracle, when it goes unrecognized, when the dilemma shows Raven that you were the miracle. It wasn't a miracle to Jesus. It was a miracle to Peter. But it still doesn't go recognized. Dilemmas. Tiffany, have you ever been in that situation? Courtney, have you ever been in that situation? Thomas Britton, have you ever been in that situation? Exhale, have you ever been in that situation? Mother Mears, have you ever been in that situation? Ray, have you ever been in that It goes unrecognized. Dilemmas. The Lord wants you to know. Don't let your dilemmas distract you. Don't let your dilemmas distract you. Continue being a miracle. If you don't give up, if you don't faint, you shall reap. Let me say this to you again, Till. If, I'm going to stop right there. If you don't give up, if you don't faint, hear me. You will reap. Hear me? But the key is, can't give up. Mm. Don't you abort it prematurely. I don't know the limit. 
It's like no way which way you turn. It's like it's just But that's all it is, it's just a dilemma. Everybody stand all over this place. What you gonna do now? What you gonna do now? As the elders are coming, dilemmas. God has the unique way of bringing destiny into fruition. Bringing destiny into fruition right now. That's all he's doing. He's bringing the proper alignment. The thing is, we can't veer. Because if you do now, everything that you have gone through would be in vain. You have to come back and take this thing all over again. Dilemmas. Maybe there's someone here and you tune in and you're not saved. And you want to be saved. I know you're in a dilemma. I didn't want to hoop today. I didn't want to close. I wanted you to hear me. I know you're in a dilemma. But the Bible says, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. I want to introduce you to Jesus. I ain't talking about the church Jesus, the the cultural Jesus. that I'm talking about the true and living God according to the word of God. Not through my denomination, not through my affiliate, not through all of that. I'm talking about according to the word of God. He says this, listen. If you will confess with my mouth, with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, guess what? He said, you shall be saved. I ain't talking about what church culture says. I'm not talking about what religion says. I'm not talking about what my denomination says. I'm talking about what the Word of God says. Secondly, you may be a backslider. Listen, I don't care what you've done. That's the problem. See, one of the things I have now uh, that we try to be God, when the truth is, we ain't God. I always tell people, you may not be dealing with this, but you're dealing with that. The Bible says if that he's married to the backslider, that means he has a special covenant relationship to the backslider. But what he wants you to do is to come out. Rededicate your life. Lord, I don't messed up. I want to start over. I want to do it again. I just want to, and, and guess what? That's your business. The, the problem, we try to figure out other folks' stuff instead of looking at our own stuff. We just want you to rededicate your life. If that's you, you want to rededicate your life this morning? Come on. I'm not talking about joining this church. I'm talking about your relationship with the Lord. Come on. Those of you who are online, if that's you, just say simply, you know what? I want to rededicate my life. Third, this day, I've never seen a fallen away like I'm seeing it now. People are falling away from the doctrine of Jesus. They're falling away from God. They don't even see the necessity of God anymore. We make God into, we put him in the place of a dollar tree instead of true worship. I don't need to be planted. I don't need a shepherd. I don't need covering. Let me tell you something. If that was the case, it would not be in the Bible. 
He said, I give you shepherds out of my heart. Now, as a shepherd, we got to understand they belong to the Lord. We're just supposed to shepherd them. He gave shepherds. It's in his word. You need a home. You need a pasture. You need to be in a place, number one, where you can grow, a place where you can be free, in a place where the word is coming forth, not my, not my denomination, but the word of God. You need covering. Let me tell you, a sheep does not know how to fight a wolf. You don't. A sheep don't know what to do, but that shepherd has a rod and a staff. David said it. We talked about it. When he, when he came against Goliath, he told Goliath, look, I'm a shepherd boy. A lion came and a bear came to try to ball of my sheep. And the Bible said, David beat both of them down. The necessity of a shepherd. If the Lord has spoken to you and said, you know what? I'm planting you right here in new life. We don't have to vote you in. That's nowhere in the Bible. Well, that's denominational stuff. We vote. How can we vote somebody to God's house? We barely in ourselves. But the Bible says, the apostles, when this happened, they received them into the fellowship of the brethren. So if you're here today and, and the Lord has spoken to you and said, you know what, I'm connecting you here at New Life. I'm, I'm connecting you here at New Life. Come on, we'll welcome you. We'll receive you. Is there one today? Is there one? Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at what the Lord is doing. Glory to God. We have the elders here. Oh, glory. <laughs> is there someone else? This is interesting. Anyone else, you, you know you need a home, you need covering. Finally, prayer. If you desire prayer right where you are, just lift your hands. Father, you know every situation, you know every circumstance. God, we pray for those with their hands lifted right now. Lord, somebody needs peace, give them peace. Somebody needs direction, give them direction. Somebody needs healing. Give them healing. Somebody needs a breakthrough. Give them, Lord, somebody just burdened down. Lord, loose the burden. Somebody's oppressed. Somebody's depressed. God, you move in every situation. For you are God and God alone. We turn it over to you in this prayer of faith. We believe that you are hearing us this morning. And we're releasing it and by faith. We believe that it is done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. We'll give her the fellowship once we come off the air. Hallelujah. We thank God for adding to the church today. The ushers are going to come right now. We're going to do our worship and giving this first Sunday in March, this first Sunday in March. Amen. Then we're going to take our communion afterwards. Amen. We're going to do our worship and giving as the ushers are coming, as the ushers are coming. Hallelujah. We're going to prepare now to worship the Lord in our giving. Now, we know that we have those who are tuned in and we get ready to go off air. We know that we have uh, plenty ways that you can give. We believe in tithe and offering. We, are, we have our electronic way of giving. You can use our cash app. Our cash app identifier is dollar sign new life INTL. Then we also have Givelify. You can use our Givelify. Uh, if you have the Givelify app, you can use Givelify. Just type in the search New Life International Ministries. Our address is 1985 Vineville Avenue, Macon, Georgia, 31201. Hallelujah. You can use Givelify. Then we also have our text to give. Our text to give number is 478-217-7262. Hallelujah. In the message portion of the, of the text, just type in the, num the numerical amount you're giving. So like say, friends, if you're giving $100, just type in 100. Press send and follow the prompts. Amen. And then also, uh, we have our kiosk. Those that are here, we have our kiosk in the lobby. You can just go and swipe your debit card if you don't have cash or check. Amen. You can use our kiosk. And then those that are not comfortable with those electronic givings, you can simply write your check or money order. Send it to our P.O. Box. That's New Life International Ministries. P.O. Box 6874, Macon, Georgia, 312. Zero eight. Amen. So we have so many different ways that you can give. So we just want you to give. If you have it right now, just leave it. If you're giving electronically, make sure you complete the envelope so that our, our finance team can keep proper records and in our input in the system. So if you have it, just lift it and begin to wave it as we bless it. Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come presenting these titan offers unto you. Lord, we stand in alignment with your word. We believe in your word that you say you open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing and that room to receive. Lord, you say give and it'll be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over you, cause men to give to our bosom. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we thank each of you for tuning in and being with us here at New Life. Thank you for being with us here at New Life. I want to invite you to come back and tune in this same Facebook page this Wednesday for the Hour of Power Bible Study at 7 p.m. Hey, come see us, 1985 Vineville Avenue. We're in the old Scottish Rite building. Uh, just up past Fountain Car Wash on the right because we know it here at New Life it's not just church. It's an experience. Thank you for tuning in.